Who, uh, by a round of applause, what guys have measured their penis, huh? All right, all right. Now, ladies, who's measured their vagina? All right. Seems accurate. I think I know why that is. I think it's because a vagina is hard to measure. You gotta have a good plan. I've got one. Here's how you find out. First, talk to all your dude friends. Get their penis size. And dudes, don't act, don't lie about your penis size for this. This is science. We need, we need proper data. Get all those dudes, get their info, get their contact info, get them penis sizes, get them in order of, of sizes. Organize them. <laughs> then, or, then organize some, some dates and get those penises inside you. Uh, and I, <laughs> I just, go, just go up the list. Uh, scaling slightly in penis size till it doesn't feel good, then boom, you got your vagina size. Hey! That's a good plan. I'm sure a lot of people are like, hey, why don't you use different size dildos? Hey, don't rain on the parade. <laughs> the damn, the damn Grinch. <laughs> I was, uh, I was actually talking to a friend about, about penis size, and uh, I don't know if you know the, the average, supposed average penis size. Anybody? It's supposed to be five and a half inches. Yeah. Of course you know. Obviously. Five and a half inches is average, um, and I'm not, I'm not here to, to, to debate that. I am, I am curious about how this data is collected. <laughs> I, uh, I mentioned that to a friend, and my friend was like, duh, doctors get that info. <laughs> and I have been to the doctor several times, and not once has he or she ever gotten me hard and measured my penis. I don't know if it's because I didn't have health insurance for a while. They were like, I'm not gonna measure this guy's penis and then have the chance of not getting paid. That's a lot, that's a lot for a doctor to do. You gotta get a ruler and get me hard and they don't even know what I'm into. So. Uh, a little bit about me and what I'm into. <laughs> I am a, uh, a, bi a bisexual person. Uh, thank you for that whoop. Because being bisexual is tough because, you know, buying sex gets expensive. Hey! Sometimes I'm going to do jump kicks for jokes. I am for real, for reals, uh, bisexual, at least a percentage, percentage gay. I don't know if you've ever done that, uh, assessed your own gay percentage. If you'd like, if you'd like to, uh, I've got a plan for that too, much like my vagina measuring plan from before. Here's how you do it. You're also gonna make a list for this one. A lot of lists need to be made when you get home. Here's how you do it. All right. You think of every freaky dicky sex maneuver you can do with a member of the same sex. Write those down. Order that list from most gay to least gay. Then you assign an arbitrary percentage to each of those items based on how gay you think they are. And then you decide what item you think you're most comfortable with doing. Boom! That's your gay percentage right there. And there I am right there on my list with 20% with watching dicks get hard. Yeah! <laughs> 
Yeah. Y'all ever seen Dicks Get Hard? You got to. They're great. Highly recommend it. They're amazing. You know, they start off really small, sometimes smaller than others. And they get excited and they turn into this big old veiny creature. It's like looking at a bald-headed, one-eyed, paraplegic, incredible hawk transform. Hopefully, hopefully it's not green though. That's, you know, that, that is not good. But it's a, yeah, I mean, there's we're all uh, sexual beings fluctuating in our various sexualities throughout our life. So if you, I think it's important when you meet somebody right off the bat, just go and tell them your gay percentage so they know. <laughs> It's like, about Rainbow, we already know each other because you send me awesome memes on Facebook, but if I was meeting you for the first time, like, you'd be like, oh, hey, Rainbow, it's nice to meet you. I'm Johnny Gray, 20% uh, gay. <laughs> Mostly interested in women, but if they're busy, wouldn't mind seeing what's the difference like. <laughs> what's that dick do? <laughs> if you're curious, if you're curious what else is on the, the gay percentage list, uh, hell, I'll tell you, what else have I got going on? Uh, hold on, easy. Uh, can we get this one out of here? Uh, uh, zero. I'm trying to talk about 0% gay here. 0% gay. If you are 0% gay, chances are you're closer to 100% gay. Because that shit does not exist. You're lying to yourself. 20%, uh, I'll just do the highlights. 20% gay, that's me. Hey, watching dicks get hard. Don't really want to suck on them. Don't want to stick them in any other hole in the body. About the most you'll get out of me is batting it around like a cat toy. <laughs> and now I'm talking into an erect penis. I don't know why some dude's penis would be this high on that's a that's a tall dude. Or standing in a chair, which is dangerous. <laughs> Uh, next on the well, let's see. Let's talk about dick sucking for a second. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally opposed to it before I die sometime. But I, I'm a little nervous about it because I, I think I'll be pretty shitty about it because I got these big teeth and my, my lips. It's like kind of an effort to get my lips around my teeth. So I'll be making like a. Like a Bill Cosby type of face. <laughs> I want some dude to have to look at Bill Cosby sucking on his dick. Unless that dude's into it, in that case, you gotta go all out and do the full Cosby impression. I want to suck on your penis like a jello pudding in the butt. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I've been thinking about Cosby so much lately. I'm sure we all know he's in jail because he, you know, drugged and raped several women. But some people might also not know that he was the spokesperson in the 1980s for Jello gelatin, which, if you don't know, is made of horse bones. <laughs> and uh, I ate Jello probably a thousand damn times when I was a kid. Uh, not knowing it was made of horse bones. And a lot of other kids did too. And this is the 1980s when a toy was very popular called My Little Pony. So <laughs> all these kids were playing with My Little Pony, then they'd take a snack break and go eat Little Ponies. <laughs> and this is Bill Cosby pushing this stuff. And it's everywhere. It's in hospitals, it's in schools. Every adult I trusted gave it to me. <laughs> and, which means Bill Cosby is sneakily sneaking 
horse bones inside of people. <laughs> also, sneakily sneaking Rufalin inside of women. <laughs> Not to mention his penis. So, Bill Cosby is into sneaking. That's his thing. That's his fetish. He's doing it all the time. Maybe a majority of the population got some, snuck something inside of yes. by Bill Cosby. <laughs> I think it's a fun, it's fun for me, thought experiment to imagine Bill Cosby having consensual sex. Because he had a wife, he had girlfriends, and there was probably a time when he was, he was having sex with a, a lovely young woman consensually, and she was having a great time. She, maybe she came a couple times, and she was like thoroughly satisfied, and she turns to Bill Cosby, he's back there. That's where, Cos that's where Cosby is. And she, she's like, oh, oh, Bill Cosby? Mm. She, she always calls him Bill Cosby. Oh, oh, Bill Cosby, you hit me so good tonight. Mm. I'm gonna do whatever you want me to do. Whatever freaky dicky moves you want, ghost daddy. Sometimes, sometimes she calls him ghost daddy. Because he was in that movie Ghost Dad, where he plays Ghost Dad. <laughs> and Bill Cosby, first of all, thanks her for calling him his preferred moniker. <laughs> and then, and then Bill Cosby says, I would like you to... <laughs> I would like you to quit wiggling and be bopping around. <laughs> And pretend to be asleep. <laughs> That's how Cosby wants it. <laughs> he don't want no consensual sex. <laughs> anyway, where were we on that list of gay percentages, huh? Got kind of sidetracked from that. Now, let's, let's jump up to 40, all right? 40, 40 is when you're, uh, you're watching that movie in The Notebook and uh, with Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, hot and steamy, and you, you're, you keep imagining yourself as the Rachel McAdams character, which now that I think about it, I might be 40%, who knows? <laughs> Uh, by the way, sorry to the ladies, this is a very dude-centric list. Ladies, you gotta make your own lesbian list, and when you do, link me up to that lesbian list. I'm, I'm very interested. Uh, then let's, let's jump up to 69% next. Which is, surprise, surprise, two dudes, 69. Very, very number appropriate on that one. And then we jump up to 99%. This is almost the gayest shit you could get into. 99%. That is when 12 butt-naked, erect penis dudes are standing in a circle, all facing counterclockwise or clockwise. That doesn't matter. <laughs> And they insert themselves into the butt in front of them, creating a full circle of butt sex and dudes all thrusting and gyrating together like a big old centipede. That's almost the gayest. Speaking of butt stuff, I'm, I'm not super into to doing the butt stuff. And I think it's, I think it's because of a very important reason. And that reason is vaginas. <laughs> yeah, y'all check those out. Good. Yeah, those are those are good. I um, mean, they psh, they typically taste and smell way better than buttholes. <laughs> and they're they're self lubricating, so you're saving money on lube, so that's economical. And with all those reasons, I would hate to this the vagina and go hang out with some asshole next door. <laughs> not cool. I'm also not that into uh, butt stuff, uh, th things in my butt. Uh, 
I have had a couple fingers in there. Not like at the same time, but like <laughs> two, two different times. And on, on all both of those occasions, uh, I've received mixed results. <laughs> and, <laughs> they were both during, uh, during blowjob times. And uh, one, t one time, the first time, was one of the, the hardest orgasms I've ever had. And the next time, I cried. Uh, not because it was painful, but because uh, it turns out that's where my emotions are. I was wondering. They've been there all this time? All these decades? Because I'm not, I'm not a very emotional person. I've, I've probably cried away twice in the last decade. Once because of that movie, the Pixar movie Coco. And the other time was because of that, that finger in the butt. So. Where were we on the base percentage scale? We just did 99. Okay, we're at the big one. 100% gay. Everybody's ready. All those freaky dicky moves have built up to this. Two dudes. Getting married, adopting some kids, getting matching sweaters, spending their lives together in harmony. Wow. So gay. That shit is so gay. 100%. Beautiful. Uh, this might be a little awkward segue for this, but my, my family's here tonight. Uh, <laughs> they're not gay, they're... they're my parents are shout outs. This is, uh, this is their, their first time on the big island or any of these islands, so we'll be accepting any secret spots we need to visit if you want to tell us after the show. No. Alright, don't tell us. I'm very excited to have them here because uh, they're, they're great parents and uh, uh, they, they're actually. Uh, the time I cried the hardest in my adult life was back in 2004 on the phone with them when I, right after I got out of college, and, uh, they spent a bajillion dollars on my college and I got a job at CC's Pizza. And, uh, I was feeling really shitty about myself and uh, looking back on it now, it might have been because I was eating so much CC's Pizza. <laughs> they, uh, they were really sweet and talked me through it. And, that's a, that's a beautiful thing about, about family, and that's a, also a beautiful thing that, you know, so many same, same sex couples can get together more freely now. And I guess in part we have the Supreme Court to, to thank for that, um, even though it only took them several centuries and was never in their goddamn business to begin with. But. Thank you, Supreme Court. <laughs> Supreme Court is a really funny entity to me um, because I have taken the liberty, pun intended, of <laughs> uh, name, making a list myself of all the supreme entities in this universe. And here we go, here's the list. Number one, the Supreme Court and those Supreme Court justices. Uh, number two, Taco Supreme. <laughs> Number three, Burrito Supreme. Number four, you guessed it, Nacho Supreme. Number five, let's mix it up a little bit, The Supremes with Diana Ross. Good band. They're not around anymore, so we're back to Pizza Supreme. So, basically, the only Supremes in this universe is the court and items you can get at a food court. <laughs> and some people say there is a, a, some type of Supreme being, but we're, we might not know if that's a real thing until we die. But also, we're not going to know if Taco Bell and Pizza Hut is real food until we die. So. <laughs> Probably because it kills us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 